there. Uh, Ostrovsky is actually, right? <laughs> so um, I actually was forced to reschedule some of my live sessions, including uh, live uh, uh, weekly show uh, training Tuesday. So the reason was uh, really, really important. So as I call it, uh, my wife actually got to the final stage of giving the birth, right? It was planned uh, for the 6th of January, but well, uh, it was planned maybe not that accurately. And uh, we were in the hospital starting from that day. But um, actually, um, my child, my son, uh, to be precise, um, came to this earth uh, only yesterday. So yesterday I uh, became a father. So you can call me Father Andre if you want. Uh, so uh, that is the reason and, um, well, the reason of uh, my probably poor play today uh, because, well, I forgot um, what is it uh, to play chess, but uh, I will be anyway happy uh, and, you know, uh, why? <laughs> right. Okay. And uh, actually today's session will be not that uh, long uh, because uh, my wife still needs me uh, in the hospital, right? So I should uh, come back to hospital uh, in uh, approximately one hour and a half. So we will have uh, around one hour today. I also hope you'll understand. Okay. So, uh, now let's play some chess. I already have uh, 10 challenges, so let's see. Let's see, and uh, I think I will start just with the first challenger and we will go uh, one after another. So, the first was Shadow Mate today, um, and well, I just accept this challenge. And by the way, tell me what is it uh, with the sound and the picture? So is it all right? Uh, I will be happy if you'll let me know. Okay. So this game starts with the d4, c4. And that goes to f3. So we'll have Catalan, I think. Yeah. So the main line, g3. And, well, here I prefer playing c6 just getting inevitably to Catalan. Castles and, well, after White's next move, I can play d5 already. Yes, why not? Occupying the center and we have um, just a classic appearance of the Catalan pawn structure uh, where, well, Black has some uh, problems with the bishop, but it's possible to solve them. Uh, probably even immediately with the help of bishop a6, why not? Just attacking c4 and maybe preventing some direct play connected with uh, preparation of the e4 because pawn on c4 will be hanging in many variations. And Black's idea is to complete the development right and to undermine the center with the c5. So um, black uh, protects d5 uh, with all possible means uh, just to neutralize the power of bishop g2 so that to have the time to complete the development. That is the basic idea of this variation for black. So now after rook c8, I'm more or less ready for c5. Of course, it depends. Yes, after knight d2, I think c5 is just the best move. Let's do it. So I hope you're not too tired, says MWK72. Well, I'm actually very, very tired, <laughs> but of course not uh, that tired if compared to my wife. Yeah. So I take with the bishop. And now the point that my rook already exerts some annoying pressure along the uh, C file. So why can't take on D5? In this case, I just take on F2 with the bishop and queen on C2 is hanging. Uh, that is uh, one of the main ideas of uh, playing rook C8 prior to um, 
c5, right? Okay, queen to b2, now I think white wants to play b4 at some point, so I think queen to e7 should be played, just preventing b4, and maybe intending to play bishop a3. And also, there is the idea of, um, just give me a second, of playing knight to g4 here. Yeah, I suppose knight to g4 looks great. Yeah, let's try it. Just attacking f2, that's my idea. Uh, Miktal says, uh, congratulations. Uh, did you start to uh, teach your son chess? The earlier, the better. Well, the training plan is ready. Uh, but, well, I didn't start. I just decided to give him some time to enjoy this world before starting just everyday chess training. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so F2 is hanging at the same time. Yeah, I've prepared E5. That was another idea behind playing knight G4. And now I can take on F4 and then take on E3. Yeah, with the absolutely winning position, I think. Or very close to a winning position. So I have pair of bishops, I have dark squares, so white spawn structure is just awful. Yeah, it should be winning. Um, okay, let's take with the queen. Looks very natural. And now what? Queen to h6 check. Yeah, let's try this move as well. And now, knight to f6 looks good, just attacking g4, right? Um, if g5, then knight g4 check, in g2, knight e3 check, king goes back to h2, let's say, and then something like queen h5, for instance. Or even taking on d1, I don't know. That should be good. Taking on c4 should be also good, so position should be winning just uh, many different ways exist. I mean, maybe rook e8 is also a move. Yeah, let's start with the rook e8, just to prevent all um, dangers connected with the diagonal h3 c8. Uh, it is a tempo move because rook e2 is a threat. Yeah, rook e2 now should finish the stuff. Because queen h3 is the next move and I win. Checkmate, inevitably. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yep, so uh, the main mistake uh, was actually to play a4. So after a4, uh, black achieves a great position just um, by force. So let's go back to this moment. Yes, so a4, was it necessary? Uh, so it was better, I think, for white to play something like knight to e5 here. Knight to e5 is a possible move, but of course, black has no problems. So actually, all this line uh, with d takes c5, in my opinion, uh, makes no sense for white. Uh, moreover, knight to d2 is already a dubious move. Uh, so instead of that, uh, white should make a main theoretic move. It is knight to c3. Uh, exerting pressure on black's d5 and closing c file. So now if I play c5, well, uh, I have to be ready for this um, dc5 followed by cd5 because there is no longer this bishop f2, right? Um, actually, uh, knight c3 is quite interesting idea. Uh, at first glance, it looks like white sacrifices a pawn. At second glance, it appears true. <laughs> so d takes c4 uh, definitely can give uh, black an extra pawn for some time, and uh, maybe for a long time, maybe for uh, the whole game, to be honest. Uh, but uh, uh, it is a typical idea in Catalan, so uh, every Catalan player should be ready to sacrifice a pawn uh, to make the own Catalanian bishop active, bishop g2, I mean, to open up this diagonal finally and uh, to try to exert the pressure. Moreover, after d5 takes c4, white will have a chance to play e4 and uh, just uh, to compensate the missing pawn with a good center. That is also one possible idea. Okay, so let's continue. Um, 
Uh, let's continue. So the next challenger was uh, Alekinin. Okay, let's accept, but it will be very dangerous for me to play this guy because look at his rating. Yeah, and I didn't play for a long time. Uh, e4, okay, e5. Let's play something familiar. All right, e d4 and bishop to c4. Okay, it uh, leads to two knights, I think, after knight f6, right? Just a transposition, one of the variations. d5, and now bishop b5. I usually react this, uh, react to this with the knight e7. Because I like the position of the knight on b8 in case white takes on c6 and plays knight to d4. That's the point. Okay, here I just develop the bishop and complete my development. So at the moment I have an extra pawn. So to uh, win it back, white has to take on d4 immediately, uh, which was possible but not dangerous for black, or to take on c6 first to damage the pawn structure and then to take with the knight. And now it all looks very ugly, but knight goes to b8 just protecting c6. And my bishop c8 controls f5 square, preventing knight to f5. And uh, yes, at some point I will have a chance to play c5 followed by knight c6. Uh, for example, right now, uh, let's try it. It looks like a very natural idea. Why not? Just to grab in some space and control in the center, right? And what are we doing? We are playing three minute blitz. Wow, didn't see that. Alekinen made his favorite trick again <laughs> to offer me a three minute blitz while well, banter session. Ah, come on. That's not very pleasant, but okay. Very good that I noticed it right now. It's not too late, I mean. Okay, let's grab the space even more. I can afford it, so why not? And now what? That's an interesting question. So maybe it was better for me just to fight for f5 square. But maybe I can do this right now anyway. Just g6 preparing bishop to f5. He has this weakens h6, but I don't think it's a critical weakening. I think this is just more important. And now I guess I have this square to occupy as well. It starts looking very good for me. So now let's say c4 deserves serious attention. c4, what white will do? Knight takes c4 doesn't make sense. So I have just a perfect bishop on d3. Andriu Vitao is narodzinem sina. Says Yuri Berlimenko. Uh, it's a Ukrainian language, my... Uh, native one, my favorite one. Dakur vam Yuriu. Okay, knight to f1, preparing what? Preparing something to e3, maybe. Uh, queen to d2 or something, so maybe it makes sense for me just to pre uh, prevent b3 or something, yeah? So white definitely wants to undermine c4. And well, it makes sense for me to prevent it. Okay, so now what? Is it possible to attack already somehow with a d4? Not sure. And I don't have enough time, so let's make just a normal move. Okay, sacrificing b2. And it might be quite promising for white because of the weakness of uh, dark squares in my camp. Yeah, and f7 is heading. So I have to play something like this, I think. I don't have any other normal defense, I mean. And no time to make a normal decision. 
But okay, let's keep playing. Position looks very good, but I might be missing something. Oh, thank you, thank you. Check takes here. Isn't it a checkmate by force? Yes, it is. Okay. Very good start. Very good start. So, uh, this variation is actually very promising for black. I mean, yeah, black has no problems after knight b8. That's the main point here. But, um, blunder the queen. Okay, Lekinen says that he blundered the queen, so he didn't see that uh, g6 was protected two times. Um, yeah, position was quite promising for white there, so maybe I missed something uh, in the end. But uh, I do think that after bishop d3 followed by c4, I was just more than a kite. And this position looks very good for black, so black should be much better. Uh, so probably this idea with going away with almost all my pieces from the king side was a bit dubious for black, but here... I think that black is better, but even uh, more interesting uh, for black and more promising uh, was not to give you even the chance to play queen c2, so maybe bishop f5 here instead of a4, maybe even prior to playing a5, I'm not sure that a5 is needed here. So bishop f5 or bishop g4, I don't know, yeah, it looks just very good. I control the center, I control light squares, and uh, mm, well... I'm more than okay here. I think the black is already better. So for white, uh, it is actually needed uh, to improve somewhere in the very, very beginning of the game. But I'm not sure that this improvement exists. So my opinion is that the whole line is just very good for black. So um, short term, maybe white has some tricks. But long term, it looks just better for black because of the pair of bishops and uh, the ability of grabbing the space, of controlling the center, that's the idea. Okay, um, let us continue, let us continue. But there was an interesting question, just a sec. Um, do you speak Russian? Says, sorry, asks Kostakis. Yes, I speak Russian as well. Again, this language questions <laughs> they become just popular uh, because uh, it is probably the second show in a row when uh, people starts uh, people start asking me about languages yeah okay let us continue let us continue and uh, Tricanti is the next five minutes let's go and I play with white Okay, so what about e4, my favorite move, Sicilian? Yeah, just as usual. As far as I remember, Triconti plays dragon, but I might be mistaken. Let's see, yeah, dragon, okay. And again, I think we played this line several times already. So I don't want to attack the dragon. I just try to play positionally in the center against it. And a5 is definitely one of the moves here. Uh, another interesting language question. So which language will your son learn? I think that's uh, several, yeah. 
So since we live in Germany, he will definitely learn German. And um, inside the family, uh, he will hear uh, mainly uh, Ukrainian and Russian languages. But uh, I also plan to speak a lot, um, a lot of English with him. So, yeah, probably four <laughs> languages. But of course, we need a proper system uh, just to prevent some uh, confusions, right, and so on. I'm not really sure if it is possible to learn everything simultaneously. But okay, we'll see. Uh, bishop e6, well, um, against this a5, I think the best idea for white is to try to come back with the knight to d4 as soon as possible, but it doesn't work right now, I guess. It's probably a playable move, but, well, no. If knight e4, then knight e4 might be really annoying. So let's try knight to, no, knight to d5 also doesn't work because if knight takes c4, so maybe bishop b5 or bishop f1 first, and then we'll see. So now knight e5 is ready because e4 is protected, right? Knight at g4. This looks a bit strange. This looks a bit strange. Well, there is definitely a pressure in my f2 and h2, but I'm not sure that's well. It really looks dangerous. So yeah, let's just play what I've planned. Knight at d5. With this move, I actually uh, control b6 in addition to everything what I wanted to achieve with the knight on d5 which means that black has no queen b6, just adding the attack against my f2. So now knight on g4 looks simply dubious. I don't see that uh, black achieved anything concrete. So I'm not sure what black will do here because, uh, okay, that goes to b4. What about just asking the knight about the reason of coming here? Because if knight d5, e d5 looks like, well, I wanted to achieve this pawn structure, right? Right. And it will be a tempo move, attacking the bishop. So, I don't know, bishop goes to d7 probably now. Yep. And now knight d4 starts making sense because knight on b3 makes nothing, right? And b5 is weakened. So, I could definitely occupy this square with the knight or bishop. I think occupying it with the knight uh, will be just a okay. kite. But black probably wants to do something like e5 or e6 here. And then after I take and pass uh, queen goes to h4, attacking both f2 and h2. So probably it's time just to um, clarify the things with the knight. I mean, to, to play h3 and only then Knight to d4. Yeah, it looks just logical. Knight of six. Preventing my knight d4. Okay, but I thought that, 
Yeah, knight e5 was interesting, but uh, then I realized that okay, f4 traps the knight there, so probably knight f6 is actually the only sensible move in this position. Well, well, well. This makes my position even more promising, I guess. So now what to do? There are several plans, of course, and uh, the most obvious one and uh, the most promising probably is just to exert pressure along the e-file. But I have to complete my development first. So black's queen will probably uh, want to occupy b6. So why not to prevent it with the bishop e3 move? To complete a development and at the same time to prevent queen b6. So now I have very suitable move queen to f3, protecting d5, after which I can occupy finally d4 square with my knight, which was planned. All right, so d5 won't be hanging. That's the idea. And if black will play e6 or e5, I think this uh, change of the pawn structure will be just in my favor because it will weaken seriously d pawn, d6. So, okay. And the guys say, time, Andre. Yes, the time is my problem today. I told you, I forgot. How is it to play Blitz? So, I'll need some time to recover. And by the way, I see this session uh, as some training before uh, my next uh, game in the Bundesliga that will happen uh, on Sunday, right? It's necessary to play some games. To remember how is it to play chess in general. To train some tactics because, yeah, playing Blitz usually sharpens your mind. As for this concrete position now, I think white is just much better. I have pair of bishops, right? Well... Now, after exchanging d4, probably I won't have pair of bishops, but e6 is weak. A lot of weaknesses all around the board. Um, okay. Actually, didn't notice that this move is possible. Yeah, okay. I win some material, hopefully. Oops. Let's take this one. And now d5. It looks a bit dubious, actually, because now f2 might be the case, yeah. But probably. A different move was better, something like, yeah, queen to h4 instead of queen f6. Because now I think I'm fine. Oh, I blundered on h3. That's bad. Maybe I, I didn't blunder because rook e5, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There are a lot of weaknesses, of course. This position should be winning, but I have no time. But the situation on the clock is a bit better for me, so I should should win this game. Yeah, I won it. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot for the game. It was, uh, well, quite solid, and I forgot about the time. Um, but actually... This knight g4 was really dubious. I think knight g4 is the main reason of black's problems here in this game. Uh, instead of knight g4, probably it was better just to take on b3. So yeah, it looks a bit strange because you give up a bishop for the knight, but at the same time you just damage my pawn structure. And, uh, well, you definitely will have some counterplay connected with that. So bishop b3, I saw uh, many times that, well, dragon players prefer this uh, exchange. And, well, they have a normal, um, sufficient counterplay for a missing bishop. So, 
uh, for actually uh, worse control over light squares all around the board. Yeah, so knight g4 is definitely not a move. Yeah, knight g4 just gives me a chance to uh, achieve what I wanted, uh, just grabbing some tempi, right? And uh, yeah, so let's have a look at this. Yeah, I just uh, have very good position. Now black has no counterplay. That's the point. So usually black has uh, in the Sicilian in general, black has a counterplay along the c file because there is a knight, and it's possible to attack that knight on c3. But there is no knight on c3. I have a pawn there, so uh, c file uh, no longer means anything serious. And um, uh, the pawn structure is better for me on the queen side as well, because um, it is fixed the way that creates weaknesses in black's camp, not in white's one. So my a4 is not is not bad. A5 is actually vulnerable, and if black plays b6 at some point, b6 becomes vulnerable. Also, there is a square b5 that I can use with my knight, for example, after maneuvering it there. So if black just stays and waits, I, I will play just queen f3, uh, like I said uh, during the game, then knight to d4, knight to b5, then probably bishop to d4, and then rook e2, another rook to e1, exerting pressure on e7, maybe even grabbing the space on the king side, playing g4, g5 at some point. Who knows but well white has more space white has uh, weaknesses to attack black has nothing that's the idea okay let's continue let's continue who who is next uh, the next was um alvi from spain let us accept the challenge and play e4 e5 Knight f3, knight c6, d4, e d4, and we have the sculch. The main line or knight c3 variation. Let's see, knight c3, okay. Probably the second choice after knight c6, the main line, I mean. Castles, castles, and d5. So we have, yeah. This uh, very calm variation where white uh, risks nothing, right? Because white has slightly better pawn structure, because there are no weaknesses. White has uh, better development. Uh, but uh, what black has um, to compensate that is the uh, additional open file, I mean the B file. Um, and, um, well, a, b a bit better situation in the center because black controls the center better than white does. So at some point there is a dynamic opportunity of just pushing the pawn. D5 or maybe C6, maybe both. So it depends. That's what I mean. Okay, so there are different ways of playing this position. So uh, bishop E7 is possible, bishop D6 as well. So let's try bishop D6 in this game. So bishop is no longer needed on b4. Uh, it's better placed here in this diagonal, b8, h2. Moreover, b file should be empty uh, to use it with the rook. I also exert some pressure on h2. At some point, uh, e5 square might be quite good for me to occupy with the bishop, protecting the um, knight f6. If it's still on the board, because white can take an f6 right now if he wants. And also creating some pressure on diagonal h8a1, uh, which might be the case if uh, it is weakened. Okay, h3, rook to b8, attack on b2. Oh, I can take on b2 right now, or not. Do I miss something? I think no. Well, let's see. Rook takes b2, knight goes to d4, attack in c6. Then let's say I protect uh, c6 pawn with uh, bishop d7, then probably knight b3 sort of trapping my rook, right? Uh, it might be, it might be, might be diff well, difficult to go out. Not sure if it is possible. So let's start with the bishop e5 move here. 
attacking b2 twice and sort of preventing knight e4. Also protecting the knight on f6. So now if white takes on f6, then um, I take with the piece, not with the pawn. So my pawn structure remains good. This makes sense, I think. And now I'm ready at some point to just to play h6, forcing the bishop to go away or to take on f6, which gives me a pair of bishops. And uh, no compensation in the form of this damaged pawn structure in the king side. So black can't be more or less satisfied, I think, with the results of the opening now. I don't think that knight e2 is a good move. But okay. Rook takes b2, rook takes b2, bishop takes b2, then what, c3 probably. He doesn't trap my bishop, to be honest. So after that, I can play h6, I think. I can play h6 right now, but in this case, I don't win a pawn. The question is, should I win a pawn or not? But it doesn't look like white has a refutation of uh, my greedy choice. So, why not to take? Let's see, rook b2, rook b2, bishop b2, rook b1 may be attacking my bishop, but bishop goes back to e5. So, controlling everything, so. Yeah, I think it's fine. Let's try it. Let's remove bishop b2. I guess to g3, and now what? Just h6. It's time to clarify the things with the with this pin. It starts being annoying because uh, after knight g3 there were several threats. One of them knight h5, exerting annoying pressure. Honestly, so h6 looks just in time. <clears throat> and by the way, if bishop goes to h4, I can even play g5, just trapping it. I don't think white has anything serious. Rook b1? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Bishop to e5, bishop to d4. Look good. Both. Let's try bishop to e5. Right, why not? Just going away, still controlling f6. It was possible, I think, just to take on g5 and to exchange bishops that way. But uh, it actually weakened my pawn structure on the king side and gave my opponent some serious chances. So I prefer this way while my pawn structure remains just flexible. I don't have weaknesses. It's okay. My only problem is not very good bishop, but I think just a question of time. Knight f5, okay, I'll just take this knight. It's not dangerous for black. And it's time to activate my pieces. I think rook to e8 deserves attention. Um, queen a5 as well, just attacking a2 and controlling e1 square. I know which move will be better. Let's try queen a5, just a straightforward attack. a2 is hanging and e1 is under control. Rook a8 was also playable, but after rook b7, it wasn't that clear how to continue. Queen a5, well, looks just great, I don't know. If I win a2 in addition to everything else, I already have an extra pawn, by the way, it will be just a winning position. 
So white has to spend the time. Oh, rook to b8. Well, the move I missed, <laughs> honestly. No surprises, yeah? I'm not in the best shape ever. But uh, probably it's not that dangerous anyway. So queen e1 check, uh, king goes to h2, let's say rook takes b8, queen b8, queen e8, takes e8, knight e8, bishop d7, attacking the knight and pawn on c6. That's not good for me. What else? Uh, queen a3 is possible, queen c5 is also possible. Does white have a threat? I mean, rook f8, king f8, then queen d6, yeah, that might be, that might be not very good for me it's also possible just to give a check on e1 and then to play queen e7 right yeah i think it will be the most solid way by the way uh, I, again i forgot about the time so i have to be faster no questions my opponent has to be faster somehow That was definitely not the best technique ever. It was actually a disaster in the very end. But, uh, well, <laughs> come on. Yeah, uh, it was just like a play of a guy who didn't play chess for a long time. Right, so one of a sudden, I realized that, well, I have only 26 seconds on the clock and started doing something random just to not to lose on time. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I think I told everything that I think about this variation during the game. So I had a lot of time because my opponent was also thinking. Um, and um, well, just to spot the mistake, uh, 92 looks uh, dubious. Yeah, maybe it's not uh, already a mistake, but 92 looks dubious to me. So instead of playing knight to e2, I think um, it deserves attention to put this knight on a4 right because uh, white wants to occupy uh, c5 after all it is also possible to do the same after taking on f6 so this also looks interesting just to damage my pawn structure first after this exchange and then to do something like that so just to protect the pawn uh, with the knight from a4 or if you don't want to occupy this uh, position with the knight you can try rook to b1 also play the move and then this typical uh, play against my weaknesses on uh, the king's side, but well, I think this end game is um, more or less even. Uh, maybe sometimes black has a bit better playing chances, right? Because of just some dynamic factors like pair of bishops and so on. Uh, also, an interesting idea: um, if you want to take an f6, probably it doesn't uh, really necessary to spend the time on h3 move. So maybe. It's better to do it immediately. So just bishop takes f6, everything is exchanged, then knight e2, knight g3 quickly, or knight e2, knight e4, also typical maneuver, and so on. Okay, let us continue. So, the next challenger was Duke Crusher. I accepted. And I play with black, which means we will have something connected to London system maybe so okay let's try to play against it i mean not to give my opponent an easy play oh call this system okay that is also a move let's try this and bishop to e2 even not to d3 what the reason Right now, I just don't understand. It just looks like a good version of um, Queen's Indian defense for black. Huh. 
I don't see a single problem. And let's occupy the center. And okay, I actually wanted to prevent exactly this uh, pattern with uh, knight a5 and so on, but yeah, I just played d5 automatically because uh, usually when I play a normal game, a tournament game, I don't. Um, I don't mind if uh, white comes up with this plan, but in bleeds, well, in many cases I just have some problems with fighting this plan. That's why I wanted to play something like d6, to be honest, not d5. But okay, I've played what I've played, so now it's time to play this position. There are a lot of different options. Let's try just to simplify the situation in the center to see how it works. White will probably take with the pawn. And maybe we will have hanging pawns in the center. So no, knight takes d4. Okay. This probably simplifies black's task to equalize chances and makes it harder for black to play for a win. But I want to win this game. So maybe it is just a good strategy for Duke Crusher. Okay. Let's see. So pawn takes d5. Uh, what to do? To take on d4 first. Yeah, let's try it. And now queen takes d5, knight takes d5, or bishop takes d5. Of course, ed5 will be a positional mistake, a serious one. Just creating the isolated pawn yourself in a situation when it is actually not necessary. So bishop d5, knight d5, or queen d5, queen d5 bishop f3 then. I'm not quite sure I want to exchange my light squared bishops already. Not my light squared bishops. Well, light squared bishops, yeah. So, knight takes d5, yeah, or bishop. Let's take with the bishop and see how it works. <laughs> Johnny Starbuck <laughs> just trolls me. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, when will you get your chance at the World Championship? Next year, buddy. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really fun. Okay. Yeah, let's make this key move. I tried this uh, move many times already against Duke Crusher, right? So let's try it in this game as well. But probably here it was just uh, not the best decision. Because now the knight will attack my bishop from c4. Yeah, it's just kind of a waste of time. Okay, so how to compensate this waste of time? I don't really know. So I have to fight this bishop d4 somehow. That is the annoying piece, honestly. So knight d7 maybe to start with. I want to play e5 at some point. Okay. Yeah, and uh, well, this move became possible only because I've made this bishop a3. Yeah, bishop a3 was stupid. In that situation, come on. So I have to protect g7, right? I think f6 could be played, but it looks too passive. So maybe queen g5 instead. Yeah, let's try queen g5. Just counterattacking a bit. And at least occupying a good position with the queen. Maybe not good, but at least active, right? The first active move in this game. It can't be that bad, I think. And now queen g6. All right, attacking something. <laughs> and Fuxia or Foxia says, time. 
Yes, exactly. I have one minute only. Yeah. Not well trained. So Rukan C2 is hanging. One has to make a decision. How to protect it? How to protect it? By the way, I didn't play f6 because of white's e4. And then bishop c4 attacking e6. Oh, knight to h4, giving up a rook. Then bishop g7, but I think I will have a lot of extra material anyway. Just a serious blunder, I think. Yeah, big one. Bishop takes g7. And now what? Oh, so many different moves. Let's just prevent everything dangerous connected with. Yeah, checkmate and threat, right? Because I have an extra minor piece after all. It's enough for a win. Sure. Surely. Oh, come on, why did I take with the knight? Strange decision, yeah. Very strange one. Yeah. Interesting command from Blackmar. Knight h4 and repetition. Oh, god, okay, yeah. <laughs> now we can see this repetition. So there should be two or something. And bishop c3, trapping the queen. I mean... Just forcing the queen to be exchanged. Just the last active piece, the last dangerous piece, and now I simply have extra minor piece. No compensation at all. Um, okay. Let's take it. Let's protect everything, just to prevent the counterplay. Yeah, it's time. It's time to define the situation, right? To attack opponent's weaknesses, because I have no time on the clock, <laughs> right? It's time to play just normal chess. Oops. I might be losing on time, but I will try to do my best to prevent this very awful scenario. Okay, now at least a draw. Okay, so, uh, well, White's main mistake was to blunder Rook on C2. Uh, after Queen G5, I'm also not sure that uh, Knight A3 was the best move. So let's come back to that moment. Well, I don't command the opening stage because uh, it's clear that, well, if White plays a Kole system, that may be the only chance to fight for advantages to develop the bishop on d3, of course. After bishop e2, I think black can easily equalize uh, different ways. So let's get back to uh, the most interesting and uh, critical moment of this encounter. So it was after queen g5, just a sec. Um, well, queen g5. Uh, g2 is hanging, right? So, yeah, now white has a chance uh, white has a chance to to play f3 or something. I'm not sure, but maybe. 
just f3, but then e5, right? Yeah, e5 is ready. That's the point. So maybe bishop f3 was better. I mean, just exchanging this um, potentially dangerous piece on d5. After which, yeah, white has no problems with the king side and can completely focus on the play uh, on, the, on the queen side. Yeah. So, yeah, bishop f3 can be recommended here. After knight f3, I think it is also not that a big problem for white to find a good move. Let's say rook c7 is possible. Just attacking my knight and going away from that position, vulnerable one on c2. So also, it should be something around equal, All right? Not a problem, so just, um, yeah, giving me a chance to grab c on c2. Uh, gave me a winning position. After bishop g7, by the way, I was also not forced uh, not forced to give up the rook. I could have played the rook somewhere. And then my bishop a3 is here just to come back to f8 to protect g7. I just decided to play f6 to simplify position. But after bishop f8, it was better for me to take with the rook, no questions. Or if I wanted to take with the knight, uh, then just to start with bishop b2 maybe. I don't know, but uh, yeah, bishop b2, queen b1 is not that clear, so yeah, definitely to take with the king, with the rook, but not to give up f6 pawn. Knight f8 uh, gave um, White a chance to take queen f6. And my blunder was exactly not that uh, after knight f8, uh, pawn on f6 is hidden. Uh, I thought that I could take on e2, that was my idea, but um, I probably underestimated White's uh, queen g5. Or maybe overestimated it because now I can see that I have king to f7 and I can't see a uh, normal continuation. Yeah, it was possible yeah, for me to play this position. I thought that uh, somehow I thought that after queen g5 it will be perpetual. So king h8, queen f6, and so on. Um, yeah. So after queen g5, king f7, of course, queen h5 check is not possible because of queen takes h5. And if queen f4 or something, okay, king goes to e7. So what? I have extra um, minor piece, two minor pieces on already, right? Yeah, so absolutely winning position. Okay, um, so queen f6 was possible, but uh, maybe it was still losing. Okay, let's continue. So let's play uh, sort of two games more, because as I said in the very beginning, I still have to help my wife in the hospital today, so uh, let's play the cloud. So the previous encounter was really, really interesting. As far as I remember, I played Philidor and experienced serious problems. So today I won't repeat the same mistake. We have scotch. I got a transposition to this line with... Or maybe we had the same line. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. What was it? Maybe it was this line. Doesn't matter. Okay. So, we continue this opening dispute. So the same line like two games ago or something. All right, so maybe in this game my opponent will show something new. So my opponent in that game played h3. So here white tries to take on f6, which was recommended by me <laughs> in the postmortem of that game. Okay, so it's typical, typical play. Uh, now what? So the same bishop e5 deserves attention just to stop white from playing knight d4 immediately. It is also possible to play c5 here with black. Two options. Um, let's try bishop to e5. Then we will see, yeah, c3, now rook to b8, I guess. Just attacking b2. So I try to create some weaknesses in white's camp. It's not that easy. Uh, to play when your opponent simply has no weaknesses. 
b4. Oh well. Hmm. It might be risky, of course, to weaken the pawns this way, but probably I can't refute it immediately. So maybe it deserves attention as well. Might be completely playable for white. So okay, let's complete the development. I think it's too early to undermine this pawn on b4. Moreover, white can play a3 if he wants. B4 is not awful. It looks strange, but I can't refute it. So, if I can't refute it, then, uh, well, white controls c5. It's not bad. And also, white creates uh, this good pawn configuration in the sense of limiting the activity of my dark squared bishop. Okay, so now I think I have to do everything to play c5 at some point. Maybe even right now or next move. So let's try rook to c8. Preparing this c5. Yeah, so if, let's say knight goes to d4, I just play c5. If I play something like f4, I go away with the bishop and then anyway play c5, right? After rook c1, I also play c5. So I want to have a counterplay. Knight goes to g3, well. White plays very good chess, to be honest, in this game, at least. C5 takes b4, c3 takes b4, then rook c1 and bishop f4. So after c4, a4 should be played. And then what? d4 maybe, yeah, with, with, with the counterplay. Because knight h5 is now a threat, very annoying one. Yeah, let's try it. At least it gives me some activity, and that is what I need when I have a pair of bishops. Yeah. Knight h5 will be played now, 100%. Just attacking f6 and protecting f4. But still, I have some activity. So maybe I have some play. Uh, maybe not. Bishop f5, by the way, is a very good resource. Yeah, this move I definitely missed. But maybe I can sacrifice something. I don't know. Rook takes c3, bishop takes d7. No, it doesn't look like a good compensation. Rook b7, maybe. I don't know with which rook to play to protect my bishop. Let's try this. Now I can't take with the rook on b4 because of some threats. Connected with the back rank and, so uh, well, jumps of the knight there. So yeah, I think I have to play this way. Yeah, position is very tricky. 
Now he goes to f5. Now I have problems with my king, for sure. Maybe they are not that great. So what do I have here to compensate all these troubles is uh, the outside past pawn, which is very nice. It might be very hard for that knight to fight this pawn. But first I have to do something with that knight itself, okay? So let's try this. Oh my god. It's just a blunder of a checkmate. <laughs> Come on! Yeah, checkmate in three. Or in four, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, rook b5, a decisive mistake. Wow, I've just missed that. I mean, I've missed the check on g7. I thought that I have an h6 square for my king. Yeah, that's very bad. Okay. Yeah, I have to resign. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Yeah, rook b5, just a move of, of a stupid person. Um, instead of that, yeah, rook d5 that was suggested by Blackmar. Yeah, maybe for this position, maybe for anything else, I don't know. Yeah, but rook d5 looks okay. Um, also, just immediate uh, king h7 looks normal, I guess. Yeah, why not? Yeah, but rook d5, yeah, why black should complicate the things. And now if check, then king simply goes to f8, the knight is hanging. And if knight goes away, just take on uh, a d4. But maybe it's not that simple as I want it to be. So knight h6 is also interesting here. Preparing rook g8 and so on. Yeah, it might be might be quite quite interesting. But not clear yet. Yeah, so king a7. I don't know. Yeah, very complicated position, I don't know. But rook b5 is just stupid, right? Yeah, come on. Okay, one more game. And I go back to my wife. <laughs> I think it's better for me to be there. Okay, uh, we have um, Troll Fjord Paddler. Except it will be the last game for today. Play with black. So, what do we have here? Named to Indian? Which variation? Queen c2, the main one. Classic line. And knight to f3. Okay. There are different methods of playing this position. I usually try to prepare e5. With all possible measures. And it is uh, one of possible reactions on e5. There are all, usually a few. So to, to play d5, to take an e5, or maybe just to ignore everything and to castle. Or not to castle, I mean this type of positions with the e5. Why well, can't just do three things? To play d5, to take on e5, and yeah, to ignore it. Taking on e5 has pros and cons. So advantage in that uh, white has a d file open and uh, white will occupy it very soon. While my queen is still there and experiences some troubles with finding a suitable square. Disadvantage is that white no longer has this great presence in the center with pawns. So. Okay, now what about just taking on c3? Uh, it looks promising. Because I have a feeling that white is forced to take with the pawn. Because if queen takes, then knight e4. Typical, typical idea. Don G asks, are you avoiding me, Andre? No, I'm not avoiding you. I just decided to play to this guy today. <laughs> it 
the bishop goes to d8. Blackmar says, no, he's avoiding me. Okay. That is what I wanted to achieve. So now I have a better pawn structure. And probably white will play c5, so just exploiting the back rank, right? So if I take on c5, then uh, knight takes c5. And if rook e5, then rook d8. Well, after c5, I think I could have taken on c5, and still the pawn structure would have been a bit better. Uh, but yeah, c5 definitely deserved attention there. Maybe e4. Yeah, c5, e4. Yeah, just kind of intermediate move. But then maybe c6, also an intermediate move, just uh, making position a bit messy. But okay, knight d2 also playable, right? So let's play knight c5. And if knight b3, I will try to disturb this c3 pawn with this move. Because both are kind of weakened. Why not to try to attack them both? I just want to grab it, right? Rook to c1. And now probably white wants to play c5. So let's prevent it with the bishop b6 move. Yeah, that was my idea. I, now I just take on b3 and then take on c5. Winning a pawn. And b3 is handy. So yeah, I'm up a pawn, but white will probably have some counter chances. Because of the activity of the pieces. But maybe not. Maybe it's not that dangerous, I mean. Uh, it's double-edged decision, of course. Again, because of the back rank. It looks like I just underestimated the back rank today. Like a patter. But okay. I play a bit stupid chess today. Mm. Rook to c8, maybe. Just protecting the pawn. c7, because bishop e6 was a threat. c6 was not possible because of hand in b7 pawn. There are a lot of reasons why I play rook to c8, honestly. So now what to do? To play sort of a4 just to create a pass pawn, yeah. Yeah, this position looks a bit annoying. But okay, let's try to be active at least. Rook here, now what? A2 leads to rook d2, so I will lose my best bomb. So maybe rook a5, provoking c4, and then rook to a4, attacking c4. Yeah, let's try it. And now I'm ready to play a2 because I have rook a8 in case of rook d2. So that's the idea. After which I will have a chance to create some concrete threats connected with this pawn. Now rook e7, is it really possible? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? But uh, does white really have a time for it? So a2... Rook takes e6, rook a8. 
yeah I think I will have decisive threats after that so thanks God I don't have these problems with the back rank anymore <laughs> after taking on this six with the pawn yeah Oh, 23 seconds. Come on. How is it How is it possible that it happens to me every time? Just don't understand. Every game today. Or we were playing 3 minute bleeds. I don't remember. Same mistake every time. Just, just losing on time. Let's try to achieve something with the help of pre moves, but I think, yeah. I'll just lose on time now. Okay, it's time to accept because, well, otherwise I just lose on time. Okay, what was that? Was it a three minutes or five minutes? I don't really remember. But okay. Um, okay. So actually, I was already better after this. This endgame, of course, is technically winning, especially after c5. Maybe it was better for me not to take on b3 immediately. Now I think it makes sense. I mean, just improve the position of my pieces first. Let's say, what about just playing c6 here? right because uh, anyway white's counterplay will be connected with uh, occupying seventh rank so here i just uh, go away with the pawn from that rank and yes i still have this thread of bishop takes b3 if i play c4 okay i don't win a pawn that's clear but this pawns started moving and well it will be extremely hard for white to protect them so all of them are quite vulnerable and well I have very simple play now. So rook d8, I, I want to uh, exchange everything that is possible to exchange. And then I think, well, uh, properly maneuvering my pieces, I will have a chance to use them. Well, um, another idea here is to play rook d8 immediately. Actually the same, but again, instead of playing this bishop b3, grabbing the pawn immediately, trying to uh, grab the d file first, that also makes sense, right? So the same, the same play. And now if uh, white plays c4, it is even better for black if compared to the line with c6, because I have this, and if rook takes, then knight c3, knight takes c2, and bishop takes c4. So I have an extra pawn, having also the bishop against the knight. It's much better for me than what happened in our game. But what happened in our game was also coming. So bishop b3 takes on c5, b4, knight uh, goes to e6 maybe e6 was a bad position for the knight maybe it was much better for me to put this knight here i'm not sure but could be so knight on e4 looks not that clumsy as it happened in our game and then after rook d7 well i will be forced of course to play rook c8 still but yeah my knight at least is better here on e4 than being attacked by that uh, nasty bishop uh, Okay, I still believe the knight e6, even this move was okay. But after bishop g4, a5 was probably just a mistake. So instead of playing that, uh, rook d8 deserves serious attention. Just preventing this rook d7, it was white's uh, main counterplay. I didn't want to uh, double my pawns, but uh, as we can see, it happened anyway, right? But in this situation, I just have uh, no problems, right? 
uh, position is very clear. I have extra pawn, I have to centralize my king, and gradually uh, black should win because the rook is better than white's one. So, uh, a bishop f3 against knight e4, which was suggested by my opponent. So, uh, in this case, I just play knight to d6. And if you play c4, I just play e4, and I think I'm just a guy. Right, so your bishop uh, never becomes active here. If it goes back, then, uh, well, I think I can play something like this. Rook to d8, if c5, that goes away, and uh, you don't uh, occupy the 7th rank. So Everything is more or less fine for black as well. Extra pawn is extra pawn. So, um, for white, it was necessary to uh, avoid this sort of pawn structures. Uh, for this reason, uh, maybe after de4, de5 castles, well, castles already gives me a chance to take on c3. So, de5, de5, uh, maybe castling lawn was more interesting. I don't know. Sometimes white plays this way. Of course, it's a different story, completely different one. Uh, but yeah, it deserves attention usually. But probably after castling lawn, I still have a chance uh, to take on c3. But if compared to what happened in our game, the rook is already on d1, right? So castles, takes, takes, knight e4, bishop takes d8, knight c3, takes here. Yeah, it's a different position. And now you have a chance to take on e5. So, yeah. Here I can't do the same. And uh, well, uh, my opponent says that bishop d5 after knight d6, okay, after bishop d5, I just play uh, rook a to d8. Okay, let's come back to that variation just to clarify the things completely. So if bishop d5, I just play rook a to d8, protecting everything and again preparing c6 or c6, well, c6 immediately, bishop c6, but after rook d8, I'm ready to play c6. That's the idea. Okay, so thanks a lot uh, for your attention to this session. I'm sorry for making it a bit shorter than usually, uh, but uh, believe me, starting from the next week, uh, I'm going to come back to a normal schedule uh, and uh, we will have, as usual, a training Tuesday on Tuesday and a long and interesting uh, late Friday night uh, banter blitz. So, um, Thanks a lot for your patience uh, and uh, thanks a lot for interesting games today. Uh, see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.